Now in today's video, we're going to attempt to restore this classic Nomad you see here. It is a Hot Wheels Redline, features the Redline cap style wheels, and from afar it doesn't look too bad. But, you can see up close it's got a bit of an issue. So someone has graciously stepped on this poor, poor soul. So a closer look at the Nomad shows you not only is the roof bent and caved in a bit, the glass is also broken. So we're going to have to address that within the video. Also you may notice the picture looks a little bit different. That may be better or worse, I'm not sure. The lighting and even the sound. All the batteries for my DSLR are dead at the moment and I didn't feel like charging them. So this entire video is going to be filmed using my iPhone. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually drill out this one post. On the classic Nomad there is only one. One up front and it actually hooks in the back. We're going to use our Dremel and just chip away at removing the mushroom. Now that we've got that ground down, we should be able to pop this right out. Oh, yeah, it was a little bit easier than it should have been actually. Before we begin to attempt in straightening out the roof, I already have replacement glass, but I want to use the new glass in straightening out the roof. The glass is bent and cracked, and it won't give me a good feeler of when I've got it straight or at least straight enough. There's a good chance some of these pillars may break, and in that case we're going to have to glue them back in place. You can see we are already making progress. At any rate, we just got to keep on doing this until we either break something or get it as straight as possible. Okay, that is as straight as I'm going to get it. We can test fit the glass, see how it actually fits. Not too bad. We still have a little bit of a high spot there. Not sure I'll be able to correct that. But now we're going to strip it and see what it looks like with all the paint off. Here's what the casting looks like after we've stripped it. Really don't need to electroplate it or anything like that, so we're just going to sand it and polish it. Before we do that, I'm going to dab a little bit of glue on each of these front A pillars. One is definitely broke, the other one is on its way to breaking. We're just going to take some of our Loctite super glue and dab a little bit on each one. We're going to use these sanding pads. We've got several different grits, but I'm only going to use three of them. This is going to be the more aggressive grit, which is actually a 1800. That may not sound like it's aggressive enough, but it will work just fine. Then we're going to go to like a medium, which is a 3500 grit, and then we're going to finish it with an 8000 grit. We're going to dip the micro mesh pad in some water, or in this case we're using Windex because I don't feel like going upstairs and getting some water. Then we're just going to start sanding. And you should see this with a little bit of work. And we're definitely not done yet. But you can see the difference already, just a little bit of sanding. I've already started the other side. Once we get the sheen exactly like this, then we'll do a polish. We're gonna take our mother's polish as well as our Dremel with a soft wheel and start polishing up this casting. Give you a little before look. And here is the result after a little bit of polishing. I think this will end up looking pretty good. Now we have the Nomad nice and clean. We've washed it with warm soapy water, followed up by mineral spirits, and then last but not least, again with warm soapy water. So the Nomad is going to be painted a Windex blue. This is a Spectraflame paint. Some of you may complain that we have a lot of blue cars, but 
This one is not by my choice. This is what the customer had sent me and requested that we paint the Nomad in. We're gonna start by spraying the bottom with a very light coat. Now that is one light coat over the entire car. You can see the chrome has it somewhat dulled. That is the light coat of paint. That is how light we are spraying that initial coat. Now it's time for our second coat of paint. And here's where we're at after the second coat. We'll do one more final wet coat and we'll let it dry. Now before I put the paint away, I'm going to let this dry and see if we've got the final result. So far, it's looking like a winner. As you can see, we need to do some serious work on this base. Now one would think by lifting up this clip, the axle would just simply slide from underneath of it. It's actually not the case. The axle actually goes all the way through this plastic clip, so we need to remove the entire clip. In order to remove this entire section, we are actually going to drill out this little post, and then we'll just glue it in place later on. And if you take off just enough material, you should be able to snap it back into place. So once we glue it, it will be secure. Here's a closer look at the base. As you can tell, the underside is nice and shiny, but the bottom has seen some serious use. The first thing we're going to do is give it an acid bath and see where we end up from there. Much better. We'll dip it in one more time. Now we still need to give it a good clean. Maybe hit it with the wire wheel, but you can see all the roughness is gone, especially from this front area. Now here is the base after I've washed it with warm soapy water and then used this brush to really clean it up. I think it looks a hundred times better. There's an added bonus. The acid did not remove the paint from the grill. So I don't have to paint that. Let's turn our attention back to the wheels. Now the owner of this car ordered some wheels from the Redline shop, which are the standard bearing wheels. These are cap wheels. But a good thing for him, I can use these for upcoming restorations. So I went ahead and ordered the correct wheels. And the difference is on a early Redline, there's a bearing that rides in there. In the cap wheel, you will not see that portion, it's just a cap. Now we've had a tutorial on this before, but we'll go over it again on how to remove these cap wheels. You'll notice there's actually a line right here. The inner part of the wheel is taller than the outer part of the wheel. This is where they snap into place. You can take something sharp, such as an X-Acto, and simply ride it on the inside of that wheel. You'll notice it catches, and then if you give it a little twist, it pops right off. To install the new wheel, you simply snap it into place. We'll go ahead and finish the other three and reinstall the assembly to the base. We're going to go ahead and use our Loctite Super Glue Gel. Now a lot of people will actually put the glue on and then add some baking soda to speed up the process. I'm just going to use the glue because I'm not in a really big hurry. We've given the base enough time to dry and everything is nice and tidy. Now we've given the paint enough time to dry in the body, we'll take a closer look. Now this next step is not necessary, but we are going to give it a polish with some polishing compound. Since this casting only has three coats, we're going to do a very light buff. We do not want to burn through the paint. Before I complete the reassembly, you may notice I actually blew out the side of the post. This is the second time that I've done that. Now there's a few ways you can go about fixing this. We're going to use a reproduction rivet. We're going to epoxy it in place. 
So it really doesn't matter. With that, we're now complete. Hopefully the owner of the Nomad is happy with the end result. This will be his first time seeing the finished product. And this is by no means perfect, but considering where we started from, it's night and day difference. And considering the fact that it had been stepped on or crushed by some object, it actually was not in horrible shape. There was very little zinc plating loss and very little pitting. I'd like to take this time to thank my top patrons, which are Corbin Toll, Mark Kidd, and Gary Burke. And thank you to everyone that subscribes to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, post those below. And as always, thanks for watching. Today we are going to attempt to restore this Hot Wheels Red Line. <sighs>